Hey guys, this is going to be a continuation video from the last episode. We're just going to look at the second half of the hands that I didn't manage to get through. If you guys want to go see out the graph for that period, go check out the previous video, episode 45, to see my results. Uh, we're going to get straight into it and try and get as many hands done as possible. Right, so our first hand, we have queen nine suited blind versus blind. Uh, villain opens, we call. Flop is king nine king, so we flop trips, pretty good. Do expect uh, villain here to see a bit high frequency. They decide to check. Uh, generally just default to one third in position at the moment. Uh, villain calls. Turn is a seven heart, so obviously um, the heart, sorry, the flush completes. But I still think we get turn called very often on this turn, despite the flush coming in. So I decide to go three quarters and villain calls. Uh, rivers are 10. I think out of position player, villain, uh, doesn't really have queen jack. We probably have more queen jack. So not too worried about the straight. Uh, it's definitely possible they have pocket 10s with a heart uh, that rivet us. Uh, that being said, I think we still want a value bet. Um, try get called by a king. Uh, we decide to bet and villain calls. And they actually show us the jack 9. Unfortunately, we don't get to stack the jack 9 here, but wasn't the cleanest run out. All right, so this next hand, we have a six offsuit in the small blind. Big blind decides to defend. Uh, we decide to check and villain call uh, bets. So 4-4 four, four do is not a great board. Um, we're not really opening too much of our offsuit 4x, but uh, villain is going to defend a large majority of their 5-4 offsuit. So generally like a 4-4 four, four, Four four board, five five board, six six seven seven are really bad for out of position because in position has way more offsuit combos of the trips than we do. Uh, I mean, some players probably open a little bit too wide in these spots, so it, it does get a little bit skewed. But in theory, uh, out of position players shouldn't really connect too well on these low type boards. Uh, flop, I decide to call because we do have ace high and we have backdoor straight draw and we do block some 4x combos with the 6. Uh, we do turn the 6 and we check villain decides to bet. Uh, I still think this is a spot that can be severely over bluffed. Uh, a lot of my range is going to be ace high, king high, stuff like that. So I, I do think villain will turn barrel here quite often and give up a lot of rivers. I decide to call. Rivers are 10. Completely changes nothing, perhaps if they were bluffing with something like 10-5, 10-3 uh, suited, things like that. Now river repair, but overall the 10 is not really relevant to either player's range. Uh, villain does decide to bet. Uh, we have a pretty standard call in theory. Do we think this spot's going to be bluffed? Probably not too often on this run out after a check call, check call, and then um, this river specifically. I do think a lot of players will bet flop, bet turn, and give up along the river. I'm not thrilled about it, but I do end up calling, and villain does have trips. Okay, this hand is pretty standard. We have king, queen off, we three bet, uh, villain calls. Flop a king. So generally in these positions, this is just going to be a triple off for value, depending, uh, obviously, uh, depending on how the board runs out. We bet, villain calls. Pretty clean turn, we bet, villain calls. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just clear as they jam here. And uh, Villain, unfortunately, has a boat. Once again, we have a very standard hand here that doesn't require too much analysis. We open under the gun. Villain, three bets on the button. We decide to four bet. I mean, in theory, this hand probably four bets like 30% of the time. Villain calls. Pretty standard C bet. We have the nut flush draw. Great board for our range. Probably just want to range C bet on Queen Jack 6. And Villain decides to jam, which is not super standard, but probably can't be bad with what I'm assuming, what, what I think their range is going to be here. We obviously call it off, and unfortunately we run into the ace-queen component of range, and we don't hit our flush. Okay, this could probably be the most interesting hand I've played in a while. Uh, let's get straight into it. So, cutoff opens, button flats, and we flat the big blind. Pretty standard stuff so far pre-flop. Uh, we flop trips, which is fantastic. Villain bets. Now, probably should check raise here. I mean, this is a board that um, Villain will probably bet very often. They still have some, you know, equity on this board. Um, and it's not a bad board for us. 
I end up calling, which I think is also okay, and villain overcalls. So at this point, it's, I mean, I could be up against the worst nine, but uh, obviously the turn nine removes that factor. So now the, now the question is, what do they actually have? Um, I do think this player can definitely stab the flop with like sevens, eights, fives, fours, threes, stuff like that. Um, and I think the out of position player could float with an overpair or perhaps a straight draw. I think they fold a six. This player specifically folds a six after it's gone um, bet call. So now the question is, how do we get max value with quads? And this is, I mean, you don't really get put in these spots too often, particularly in a multi-way spot. So got to think uh, on your feet here in terms of how can we, uh, first of all, I guess the question is, what do they have and how can we get max value? So when villain bets here again, I'm starting to think it could be a fish who is probably overplaying some sort of pair, like full house or something like, I don't know, sevens, eights, maybe even a six, could be even fives, fours, I, I'm not too sure. Uh, so, but at the same time as well, we don't really want to raise this spot because then that's just clear that we have quads, in my opinion. I don't think anyone's ever going to check raise here without quads, particularly with a player that's uncapped behind us. So, I have to, well, I mean, I don't have to, but I, I decide to put it into a... Uh, into a call and set the trap. Now, what's really interesting here is if this player calls, they almost always have an overpair uh, because, yeah, I mean, they will, never, they will never call with a flush draw. They'll never call with 7-8 again on the turn. So it's it's actually really good if Villain calls here. Um, and our range is still, you know, can be still quite weak. We could be holding on with a 6. We could have 8s. We could have 7s. We could even, I mean, 10s we probably squee squeeze. So... We do, we're not super strong. We have 9x or just, you know, some sort of weak vote. Uh, villain calls, overcalls. So, perfect. So, now I think we can always put this player on an overpair. River is another 6. Now, this becomes even more confusing. So, if, if another 6 comes, that means it's very unlikely this player has a 6. So, it's more likely they have something like a pocket pair. Anyway, we check, villain checks, and... Villain bets again. So now I'm kind of thinking, okay, it could be something like tens or jacks that flattered the button, uh, which is definitely reasonable. And has and I think it seems okay to, you know, value bet in this in these spots for these sizes. Um, so now the question is, do we check jam? I think once again, check jamming um, is quite strong. I don't know if we get too many calls. I think the best play and I could be wrong let me know what you guys think think in the comments below but I think the best way to do this is marginalize our hand a bit and hopefully allow this player who has the overpair to value jam against um, a lower full house now the only issue is although I might have qual uh, although I might perceive myself to be still you know quite wide uh, this player can actually have a lot of 9x with the way they've played their line. So I've ended up going for my initial strategy, which I flat and hope that this overpair player decides to jam on us. Um, because at this point, I'm definitely capped. I, def I mean, in his mind, he probably thinks, okay, this player never has quads because they would raise the river for value. So, but I think the thing that I forgot about is that this player is still worried about button uh, having quads, which, you know, definitely could have. So villain actually overflats, and my my I think my thought process was good. I think I just missed the final step, which was um, accounting for this player's range being uncapped. Otherwise, I think I played the hand fairly well. You can definitely make an argument that I um, I probably don't get called when I check raise the river anyway. So perhaps I did make an extra ninety dollars by you know flatting here. So quite an interesting hand i think the logic is okay i think i just missed the final part about in position player being uncapped and this player doesn't necessarily want to jam over uh i mean this player could even have quad sixes now think about it as well so yeah maybe maybe i should throw in a min raise i i'm not too sure it's really hard to play this spot here with the player behind all right so once again another four bet pot spot which i think the 
the inexperience uh, is demonstrated here. So villain opens, we three bet, and uh, out of position four bets. I mean, this is pretty clear as day. Defend, particularly in these positions, I think most of the population are going to be four betting fairly well in these positions. Uh, we flop top pair. Now, generally speaking, I mean, on these like Jack 10 X boards, Queen 10 X boards, out of position player can just rip it. Um, yeah, their most likely action should be just a jam here. Uh, you know, so they'll jam things like, you know, kings, queens, even aces sometimes. And they'll balance that range with some ace king, maybe even some ace queen. So expecting a jam here very often. And obviously we just never fold this combo. Uh, we have back to flush draw. We just, I mean, generally top pair. We're just not really folding in a four bet pot. Villain does go small. So I end up flatting, but I actually sim this hand um, a while ago and... We actually do want to just jam the flop with the top pair. Uh, there's way too much equity to deny and we have a pretty strong hand and I actually have to call us off with uh, worse sometimes. So we call, now the turn is a seven and Villain once again uses a weird turn size. Um, I think on the turn, the turn size makes sense though. Um, don't know if they want to jam too often on the seven and we obviously call. And then villain checks, which is really weird, I think, on an ace. Yeah, I mean, I feel like on an ace, they should just jam. So in my mind, it, it's probably something like queen. So I'm going to lose it here anyway. Uh, not really any point in bluffing, I don't think. There might be some give-ups, I don't know. Maybe like a king-10 suited, that, that flop bet turn, maybe. I'm not too sure. So we check, and uh, unfortunately, villain, villain has ace-queen. I do think, um, you know... If we played the hand correctly, we, we could deny the equity for, for this hand to draw. So, a um, bit of a flop mistake, but I think turn is fine. And then obviously river, we just check back. All right, so this next hand is actually fairly interesting. Cutoff opens, we defend. Now, from what I've seen, I think there's a few regs who are min raising and forgetting the fact that when they min raise, my BB defense range changes quite a bit. So the dynamic of a lot of boards uh, should be uh, should change a lot. So for example here, I mean this board already to a normal open is not a great board to see bet. Um, Ace three deuce. So when they min raise and we defend, I think it becomes even worse for the imposition player. So I think this is probably just going to have to be a pure range check on this on this flop for the imposition player. And what I've noticed is a lot of these players are C betting too wide after min raising. So I decide to attack their, you know, their, I guess, C betting range uh, by check raising. I mean, we should have all full five offsuit here. So, you know, this board is insanely good for us. We have deuces, threes, and we're going to defend all our ace, three, ace, deuce uh, against the min raise from the cutoff. So, yeah, I just think this should be a spot that should be checked almost always. Um, and given the fact that I think my range is so bolstered by strong holdings, uh, I do think we decide to check raise. That being said, there could be some level factor where this player might think that this player knows that this, this board's really good for them. And as a result, they're only going to bet their strong holdings. That's definitely possible as well. Um, I decide to check raise quite large. Uh, turn is a four, which is like insanely good for our range. Uh, I'm just going to range bet here with basically my entire check raise range. So I go small and villain calls. Um, obviously happy now that we beat a ton of their ace eggs. That being said, we still lose to a lot of uh, 5x ourselves. I think if they're min racing, they are going to bet a lot of their 5x if they are going to see bet. And as a result, we do lose to some straights. That being said, I just think a lot of the regs in the pool just have a really difficult time folding an ace. Uh, even though, it, maybe not in this spot specifically, I think maybe this spot I get a little bit greedy, but um, I decide to half pot, try and make it look like I have a missed flush draw that's not sure how to size, um, and I'm not sure if this is the sole factor for the call, river call, but or maybe it just emphasizes my point that players just don't know how to defend an ace, uh, fold an ace by the river. I mean, obviously flop is fine, turn is, can't fold, you know, top pair in a flush draw, but I think on the river, I think this is super ambitious to call. You're just not really beating anything, um, particularly because my range is so bolstered on this ace three deuce, 
particularly turn four, it's really difficult for me at a position player to have bluffs, perhaps something like a queen six of hearts decides to bluff river, but you know, there's not many combos of that. So uh, we do take a fairly exploitative, uh, maybe it's not that exploitative, maybe it's, maybe it actually is theoretically okay. Perhaps the river might be a check at some frequency, but um, yeah, we do manage to get some extra value out of the ace king portion of their range. Okay, so this spot here, I did say there were a lot of interesting hands before, but this is this will be up. This will compete for most interesting hand, in my opinion. Uh, but this is also quite a bit of a punt uh, from a theoretical standpoint. So villain opens, we three bet, and uh, what is this? Effective middle position decides to call. We bet. I mean, it's pretty standard. King high board's not bad. Obviously, the five and three make it less, not as good because we don't have fives or threes and middle position can, de can definitely have them we still bet though now the turn is where i make a big mistake i thought this turn was not a bad turn to barrel for ace queen but it seems like this four is just not that great for us because in position player has five four you know they have um six seven we don't really have the nutter part of range sure we have the king um but yeah it becomes a little bit becomes a little bit dicey on this turn so in theory we should actually be checking this hand very frequently um probably do bet very very small frequency but uh we decide to bet now villain calls so i think at this point here i think we've actually filtered out a lot of their middling range so something like jacks tens nine stuff like that uh by turn barreling so when they call the turn I think we need to give up the river. We also got to remember here in middle position, um, it's not like button where middle position is actually going to flat ace king very often. So it's not like we have like a massive ace king range advantage against them. I'm sure we have kings, but there's an argument to say that, you know, even in, in, in position player is as strong on the four turn given that they have fives, threes, and six, seven. So in terms of. In terms of this bluff on the river, it's very, very bad. Now, I got called by something that's, at the time, I thought was really just unfair, to be completely honest. But then when I thought about the hand more, off, more, I actually think this is probably the most genius call I've seen uh, so far. And uh, I'll unveil the hand that Villain calls us with his pocket sixes. Now, let's, let's run this hand again. So on the flop, uh, open obviously is fine, defender's fine. Now the flop is probably like, it's not a pure defend on flop, but it's mainly defending. So, you know, that's that's obviously fine. They have a backdoor straight draw, yada, yada, yada. Now, turn obviously we bet, once again, at, we've made the mistake here. We've punted um, his defend is GTO, not folding a straight draw and sixes, obviously. Now the river obviously in theory um, would be a fold, but if i think the first thing is on this river we're not really meant to jam too often if we do value bet we want to block so i'm not i mean and we're actually meant to do a lot of checking so if you think about my value range i only really have ace king i don't think anyone in the pool is going to play king queen like this i think what will end up happening is it'll be bet flop either check turn or small bet turn small bet river so there's not really any nutted parts of my range that wants to go bet flop, bet big on turn and jam river. So as a result, from a value range perspective, I don't really have any value hands. So when I jam and I don't have very, you know, I don't have many value hands, perhaps aces, I think aces is the only hand that wants to take this line. There's only six combos of that. Um, villain, you know, only, I probably only need to have like three bluff combos here and given that i'm betting ace queen that's just never meant to be a a bluff ever um, i'm severely over bluffing this spot which makes the sixes call very very plus ev um, so you guys are probably thinking what do we actually want to bluff with here uh, so our primary bluffs as the out of position player is going to be ace five and ace four um, and i think ace jack i can't really remember but our primary bluff is going to be ace five and ace four so 
Um, at the time, obviously upset that I got called by a hand that I thought should never call, but then after I simmed it and thought about the hand, I think this is actually a really, really good call. So um, props to this. I mean, it, it, the funny thing about all of this is it could just be a fish that wasn't even thinking about everything that I just spoke about for the last minute. But um, I think this is a really good call, and uh, I get severely punished for uh, over-bluffing this spot. So uh, definitely learnt um, quite a bit, and actually went and did a lot of small blind versus under the gun, small blind versus middle position three bet pots uh, to ensure that we don't light money on fire again here. All right, let's follow it up with a hand that I did play well. Um, I mean, this one is pretty easy to play. Uh, we open villain three bets. Um, Villain goes for a smaller three bet, so that's generally my way of deciding to flat more. I mean, Ace King isn't going to four bet all the time; it's probably half the time. So we definitely, you know, in theory, want to flat, and I just use like small factors outside of an RNG. So villains use a smaller size, which you know, generally speaking, means you want to do more flatting. So I I decide to flat. Um, flop trips, fantastic. Villain bets, we call. Villain bets turn, we call, and then. Villain just ships, um, and we obviously just call. And fortunately for us, Villain does what we did last hand, bluff a combo that should probably never bluff. I mean, having Ace of Diamonds is not a bad turn bluff combo, but definitely needs to give up River, um, blocking all my backdoor flush draw folds. So uh, I guess we do get one back there. Okay, so this is another hand that, I mean, it's not... It's not too bad what I did on the turn, but it's not amazing. Uh, villain opens cutoff, we three bet from the small blind, and villain calls. Flop a set, which is fantastic. I decide to bet. I mean, generally just always betting here, and villain calls. Now, I decide to check, which I keep applying the set rule to all my sets. I mean, in theory, um, we definitely do want to check the turn with some sets, but we always want to check the, the turn so the sets uh, that are higher up, not the bottom one. So something like kings is a pure check here. Eights will be mixed. And then sevens, we just always want to bet. Um, but at the same time, I don't think checking is too bad. Perhaps on a double flush draw board and the straight component coming in um, is not great to be checking because we're giving a lot of equity away. But anyway, I decided to check in villain bets which is really fortunate for us because now we get to check jam um, because if they check back this gets a little bit uh, unfortunate on a lot of rivers uh, so we do just jam and villain snapped us off and they actually had ace five of clubs all right this hand was quite fortunate for us uh, villain opens we three bet big blind cold four bets and in these positions we are going to defend ace five suited almost always we defend uh, we flop a flush draw villain bets uh i don't mind check raising here uh just because i do think we have quite a few over pairs that do want to check raise or so something like jacks and tens i think queens we just get it in pre so um i decide to raise and obviously we have so much equity with this hand we have back to a straight draw to both ends so like a six it will give us a straight draw a four a deuce um an eight gives us a gut shot so Quite a few things, and we obviously have the ace, so for up against queens, jacks, you know, tens. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of things going on. Um, and then the turn seven, I mean, there's not really any other way to play this. We just ship it um, and just pray they have, you know, something like ace king with the king of spades that just folds a turn. Ace queen, you know, things like that. Jack ten, perhaps. Um, so we jam, and villain actually tanked for ages and called us off with the king high, king jack of clubs. Um, their flop float is fine whether that's good in reality i'm not too sure i guess blocking the jack is okay um, but yeah i mean in theory this is a spot that i do think is under defended by the pool so it's interesting to see that a player actually defends correctly that being said in reality these hands are zero ev uh defense they're just trying to you're just trying to you're just defending these hands so that you don't get exploited by a, a the opposition who might just raise a ton of hands um I'm not sure about the turn call off. I mean, it's probably close. I mean, what's their price? 27%. I think they should just fold unless they think I have worse very often. I mean, this is the problem. Like if I just jam, 
my ace high flush draws they're just losing against that so uh interesting turn spot i think it should just be a turn fold but um fortunately for us we we jam get called by worse and manage to hold okay so another four bit pot spot here we have tens we open villain three bets um i mean generally speaking just flooding here i'm being inconsistent here because I did say earlier um, when it is a smaller three bet size this is not the full 4x I generally just decide to flat I think perhaps maybe um, the pool was very very aggro I generally do change my four bet frequency based on how aggressive the pool is so maybe that was going through my mind I'm not too sure uh, we do four bet villain does flat uh, it's actually a really good board for the out of position player. You know, they can definitely lead this board, not with their entire range, but, you know, at some frequency. So I am actually expecting to get led into here quite often. Uh, fortunately, villain checks. Once again, I did say this board's not great, but um, we do have a hand that wants to see bet and protect uh, its equity against their range. So, you know, we can start checking back things that are higher up. So perhaps something like kings, queens, aces, stuff like that. Whereas jacks and tens, we just kind of want to bet and just pray that we um, we get it in good and hope that no overcards come. So we do bet. Villain jams, I mean, obviously not folding. Um, and fortunately, but unfortunately, villain has pocket eights. So basically flipping on the flop and unfortunately the, um, the out of position player rips the set and we lose that one. All right, this hand we're playing three-handed, uh, button opens with three bet, and villain calls. Uh, not a great board, obviously, for the ace of clubs, but uh, it does have decent removal to the flop defend, and, sorry, it unblocks their flop defends that generally fold the turn. Nevertheless, we just bet one-third, we get called. Turn's interesting, we turn an ace. I do think we want to protect some of our ace X um here uh we don't want to always bet so i think this candidate's pretty good we still lose to it's not our best ace x and we still lose to some things like ace queen ace jack ace 10 um stuff like that so we check villain checks back i think at this point when they check back they almost always have some showdownable hand uh so something like you know a pair of nines um you know pocket tens jacks seven sixes stuff like that uh River is a six, not amazing. It does improve the six as part of range, but I, I decided to block for value here and we do get called by queen nine. Okay, so this next hand, we are based in a diamonds. Not super interesting, but uh, interesting turn uh, decision. Villain three bets, we call. Flop, they bet really small, which is interesting. I haven't really seen a 10% size too often in three bet pot. Uh, we do decide to flat. Uh, turns a check now. I mean, in theory, we're definitely meant to use a small size here. Uh, although, I'm not too sure after their 10% flop. However, I decided to go large here just because of the amount of people that just check call kings just willy-nilly in these spots, uh, even though they're just pure folds on turn. Um, so, even queen x is actually meant to mix fold here as well, but people just defend pure. So... I decided to go large uh, exploitatively. I mean, this combo definitely wants to bet almost always. Uh, I guess the, the interesting point here is what turn size do we want to use? And given the above uh, reasons that I just explained, I think it is not bad. And then River, we just check back because it's a little bit too thin to go for three streets here with Ace-10. And Villain actually has Ace-Queen, which is a interesting way to play the hand. All right, this hand is awkward and not sure if this could be really bad or okay so generally in these spots you're just not super thrilled anyway we open villain calls so probably a fish decides to lead which is already kind of fishy i decide to raise i mean it can never be bad to raise this hand in position at this stack depth and then villain decides to three bet us which is now pretty concerning i think we have very little fold equity so jamming here doesn't really make sense plus we're also in position so we get to realize our equity um i do call i i think i forget the fact that this player can just ship the turn which makes us puts us in a really awkward spot villain just jams and now we have a really tough decision so if we didn't turn the t if we didn't turn the pair this is obviously an easy fold but it's pretty gross here so 
in my mind, when I range them here, I expect them to either have deuces, sevens, jack, seven. I mean, I've seen some fish call seven deuce recently in this spot, so let's give them seven deuce. Um, I definitely do think it's possible they have some sort of uber combo draw, but there's not that many of them. There's eight, nine of hearts, ten, nine of hearts. And they're going to have jack x of hearts here as well, perhaps. That just jams because, like... They don't know what to do. It's a double flush draw board. They just ship it. So now I look back at this hand. I think perhaps turn call is actually burning. Um, I just don't think there's enough random. Oh, maybe they might just jam king, queen of hearts, king, ten of hearts, stuff like that. Queen of hearts. I don't know. Do they really bet mid block, three bet? Oh, I don't know. I think it's pretty ambitious. I think I should just fold now. Think about it more. Uh, but I do end up calling and uh, villain does have the set of jacks. Alright, so this hand is also quite interesting. Uh, we have Jack-8 offsuit on the button, villain defends. I mean, this hand in theory is not always an open, but I decide to open. Uh, I mean, this hand is a very good C bet, but for some reason I decide to check, which I think is also okay. Uh, villain checks again, and generally speaking, I'm either blocking or overbetting in this spot. I decide to put this hand into a block, which I think is fine. And then villain does something quite interesting, 10x, 12x actually, which... Believe it or not, it's actually a really, really good size. I mean, this is what you're supposed to do in these spots. Um, you know, you're supposed to actually be check raising extremely polar and going, you know, like something like 10x. Um, so the size here is good. So I'm probably up against a capable reg. Uh, it's not hap it doesn't happen often, but, um, you know, we're going to run into it. There are going to be some good players in the pool. Uh, we decide to defend. And River is a six and Villain ships, I mean... In theory, Villain is only really meant to do this with 9-8. Um, I do block the 9-8. Uh, I also think this is a spot that Villain thinks in position play is not capable of having 8-9 very often because of the fact I checked back the flop. Uh, and, I, and I do agree, I think most population won't have the 8-9 here. Um, so there's a few things that make me think that this could be bluffy. Uh, I also have one of my best Jack X to call. I mean, I think this is better than King Jack just because of the fact that um, we block the straight component and we also unblock their bluffs. The most likely bluff that Villain will have in this line is most likely going to be some sort of King High that wants to turn check um, and then has identified perhaps an exploit and is now decided to check raise i don't think it's going to be five four actually maybe it might be um don't think it's gonna be queen nine because queen nine probably wants to bet fairly often so in my mind it could be something like king queen king nine although king queen can probably bet the turn themselves as well so i don't know i mean there's some weird things that can go on here maybe they just punt this spot off with anything I don't think they have, don't know if they have too many strong holdings. I think a lot of their sets will just bet themselves on the turn. I could be wrong. Anyway, I decide to hero this spot off just because it just, I don't know. I just think it's full of shit. I decide to call. I have my best top pair. I make the hero call. Unfortunately for me, I actually um, run into the bluff. What do I think of their bluff? I think I think the turn check raise is pretty cool. I, li I like the turn check raise. Um, but I think river jam is very spewy. I think having the king of hearts... I just think... Yeah, the, I think the worst part of this hand is the king of hearts. Like, obviously the nine's great. Um, blocking my nine eight, that check back flop. But, I mean, a lot of my my turn call calls are going to be draw heavy. So things like King X of hearts and King Queen. So to block that part of the range, I think is is really bad. So um, jamming the river here with this combo seems pretty spewy. I do really like their turn check raise. I mean, I like, I like their strat here. I think it's good. I mean, this is definitely a high level play, uh, which you don't see a lot of people make. Uh, I just think they need to think about this river spot a little bit more in terms of their combo choice. I think King of Hearts is just an awful, awful card to hold uh, when jamming this spot. And uh, fortunately for us, we do run into the, to the bluff portion of range.
All right, so to finish off this hand review, we'll do this last hand. I mean, this is not analytically too impressive. We open small blind calls, big blind calls. Flopper set. I think I identified both of these players to be fish, given it was three-handed. I'm not too sure. But I decided to go large just because I think they're pretty inelastic here and they're going to call a ton of their range and make mistakes against the larger size versus the small size. Uh, small blind does fold and big blind calls. Check. I just, you know, at this point, it's just, I just know that these players are fish. So I'm just going to keep betting big. And river villain donks. And I mean, obviously, we have the nuts, we have the boat. We call and villain shows us the jack nine, which is a very ambitious turn call and very ambitious river bluff with said combo. Um, anyway, so that'll be the end of all the hands for the second part. So basically, all the hands up until middle of August. Um, I'm going to grind out probably, say, another 20, 25,000 hands uh, in the next week or so and probably do a small database analysis uh, at the 50k hand mark. So if there's anything you guys want to see specifically in my database, any stats that you want me to look at, any scenarios... Uh, please let me know and I can include those in future videos. Moving forward, the Road to 500NL videos will probably continue in this format just because, yeah, most people really enjoy this. Um, I actually don't mind doing it like this either. A uh, little bit more ex interesting than uh, commentating over an all-in preflop all the time. If you guys like this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. But yeah, I'll probably see you guys in a week and a bit.